Hi, my name is Ben Baker, and I kind of want a different route than a business. I wanted to kind of invent a product. So my product is called the Santa's Helper. Before I get into it, I'm going to do a little background. When uh, Stephen gave us this idea that we need to come up with something, I was like, all right, I'm going to come up with a product that's easy, that's lazy, because that's all, all the products are starting to do. That's not fun. How lazy does that get? <laughs> And so I was sitting around probably mid-February looking at our Christmas tree that was still up. <laughs> so I was looking at it and I'm like, yeah, this is going to take forever to get all these lights off of it. It's always, it's tangled, it's a mess. And so I'm like, that's what it came to me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a device that helps put on Christmas lights and take them off. A battery-powered Christmas light attractor. That's basically what it is in a nutshell. So by a show of hands, who puts on Christmas lights on the tree? The majority of you. So I'm sure you've had problems with that. The biggest one being a tangled mess. Like when you, you think you wrap it around good around your arms and then put it away in storage and you try to get it all out and it is a mess. You're like, you've got I'm spending more time trying to undo it than put it around the tree. And so then it comes up with storage issues and problems like you have no idea where you put them. So, and then breaking lights happen too. And so as you can see now, a little bit of what the Santa Helper is, I, I, I don't have a working model or anything, so I had to draw what my kind of idea was. And so, basically, what I said earlier, it's a battery-powered Christmas light, but with the press of a button, you can have it operate to help unwind it and wind it, or you could make it onto manual, and you go at your own pace. So basically, it helps you, and it keeps it organized, and doesn't allow it to tangle. And so, and it's just an easier way to put on the Christmas lights instead of having one person hold it and toss it around to the, their friend or brother or something and then go back around. So it just kind of makes it a little easier. So right now, like the target audience, when I was kind of looking into it, I was like, there's there's competition in this with now artificial trees having lights on them. And so I had to do some research and I found it's 20 to 30 million trees are sold every year and that's real trees. So I'm like, all right, the market's huge for this. And so even that's not even counting the artificial trees that don't have lights on. So it is a big market. But my market that I'm looking to target would be the big retail stores such as Walmart, um, Target, Lowe's, Home Depot, for their Christmas sales when they bring, right after Halloween <coughs> when they bring out all their Christmas stuff. It's more my idea where I'm at right now in my life. I don't want to start a business, so I'd be looking just to kind of patent this idea and then sell it or even just sell it for some sort of some sort of uh, percent of the profit they make, just something like that. I really don't want to have anything in it, just kind of, I get ideas and just want to get them out and get them to other people so they can make all the big decisions with it. So while well, figuring out this product, there were two main costs. The big one I called Stephen earlier today about was the motor because it's going to have a motor that spins inside. I'm like, that's probably going to be a huge cost. But then I realized I have a buddy who's an engineer, and he knew all about motors and everything. He told me right away and pointed me to one that would fit this type of product, and it only costs $7 per unit. So that is fairly cheap. And then the other one would be plastic, the rubber, probably on the material. And he said that would run you probably 5 to $10. And so for Walmart or one of those big, big retails, We'll probably be able to sell it around twenty to thirty dollars, or they could probably bump it even more and lower their costs because they have the machines to do it at a higher rate and get throughput out. <coughs> so, any questions? You have your you have your battle here. Oh wait, well, yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> I thought that might be a good visual prop, even though it's not. Uh, this. <laughs> this is just kind of an idea to get you to understand. I think of this as on a rotating, it would go around, but it kind of looks kind of just all thrown together, but even if you kind of undo it, it goes pretty smooth. And that's the thing, that there are, there's a competitive advantage for this because they have spools to put lights on, but there's no automatic motor that turns it. So you could have an automatic motor turning it slowly as this is unwinding. And it doesn't get caught. I've done this probably 10 times. I'm doing it the whole way. And not one light's got caught on. 
So, I mean, that, that really helped out. And I think that would be the big kicker, that you don't have to do it yourself. So you can just click a button, and then it would be able to turn on and slowly move. And it, it was kind of like the same with the, uh, the power tools. The more you push the button in, the faster it goes or the slower it goes. And that's what that motor I just showed was that, that could do. I was gonna say, uh, sometime, I was gonna say, in most trees, you'll probably use more than one big string light or whatnot. Would you? Uh, is there some way to say, like, once you fill that up, can you like pop oh, it off and put that, it? That, in that's cartridge? exactly what oh, it is. Okay. If, if when you look at the diagram, it that is a separate part to the handle. And what I wanted to do was make three of those, and so you could pop on three, so you'd have three sets of lights, and then you'd have a container, a carrying container. So that would be the organization. So you'd be able to, once one light like, string lights the zombie, the Santa's helper, you'd be able to slide it in and it'd have little hinges that hook onto it. You'd put another one in and another one in. You'd have a box probably three feet tall by a foot long, or something like that. It would be easy storage. You could sell that too. Exactly. But I didn't know whether to include that or not. Questions? Um, on the it looks like an outlet. Yes, yeah, so that, 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 that is. It's just to put the, uh, the socket into so it's not flinging around or anything when it's oh, around. Okay. So yes. that's just in there to keep it locked down while it starts going. And do you have an engineering background? I didn't know. It's, it's really sweet. So I just. I don't know. I just, I, I really was like, I'm gonna be so pissed off trying to take off these lights. <laughs> that's, that's how everything kind of inches are being made. Is kind of Why do you put it around a baseball bat? I did have it around a baseball bat, but this was more towards. This is actually a baseball tee. Okay. Like it goes up like this, and you put the ball right here. <laughs> did you think about a, a foot pedal? In other words, so we sit in here, and, and I'm kind of feeding it. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> I never really thought about the foot pedal. I, I kind of wanted to stay as simple as possible. Because I mean, see, instead of the trigger, because the trigger took one of my hands, and now I've only got one hand to work with. So if, I, if I've if i got a little foot throttle here, like my guess thing, I can feed it in. Those make a lot of sense. I like the name a lot. That, that's a great name. And I like when the, when the product's sold. That's when people go, oh, I don't care what it costs. You know I mean? There's, don't money on it. And that's the thing, though, because a lot of people already have lights. So I'm not selling the lights. I'm going to sell the product that you put the lights on. And then help you go around. This is I, ideal for <coughs> direct response TV. That's what I did our little thing. I, I said yeah. when we were introducing our thing, I was like, I'm going to hit the new commercial hard if I'm starting to finish it. It's Shark Tank. Lori? Yeah. I wonder if you can scan it through. Well, I mean, part of, part of it is that it's, it's the seasonality, too. That's a slight weakness, but I think that that market, if you said 25 to 30 million trees, I mean, I don't even want to know what's spent on Christmas decorations. So you could fit quite easily into that niche. I would want to see if there's a manufacturer who makes a lot of Christmas items, you would go to them with this patent and say, we'll sell this. And I, I like the idea that you say, I don't, want to work, I'm, I'm not, I don't want to build a business. I've got a product that I can sell. And someone else can handle it. And that's what I learned from the shark tank. It seems like people don't realize that the sharks only want product and they're trying to sell their business like that Coco the Pino guy. And so that's why I kind of go on a separate way of that. I'm not trying to sell. It's on the IP. There's a there's a company here called Sterling or something like that. Sterling, look that up. And they're they're in Kansas City and all they do is sell Christmas decorations. I mean it's amazing. Yeah, I've looked all over for so they, there's not one automatic one that spins. They all have their own spool that they can put lights on, but they're holding it, and then they probably have to wind it all out and then go. So, I mean, that's just a good storage way, but this combines the storage <coughs> with the ability and accessibility to put it around. But Sterling is the portal where all the people that have the Christmas stores go to and buy all that stuff. Sterling? And, yeah. So I can Any other questions? Then thank you. Thank <laughs> you.